So finally, Chuck Schumer is finally going to pass a new spending bill, and there is a brand new stimulus relief package that includes a new batch of stimulus checks. We are finally seeing big action being taken by lawmakers in Congress. The number three Senate Republican warned Joe Manchin against throwing his support behind a tax climate and prescription pricing package. Senate Republican John Barrasso in an interview on Fox criticized the Democrats' push to pass a slimmed down version of their signature spending bill. Now, John Barrasso in an interview on Fox criticized the Democrats' push to pass a slimmed down version of their signature spending bill. Barrasso said to my friend Joe Manchin from West Virginia, whose vote is going to be necessary for this, I would remind him that Joe Biden's popularity in that state is as low as it is in Wyoming. Joe should not walk the plank for Joe Biden. Now, Senator Manchin has been in discussions with Chuck Schumer on a slimmer package, and Schumer is expected to move quickly to consider the bill this month if a deal with Manchin can be finalized in time. The talks are concentrated on legislation that would generate a trillion dollars in revenue to divide equally between, between deficit reduction and health and energy spending. The legislation also would include prescription pricing reform. The package would be considered under budget processes known as reconciliation, and that bypassed the Senate, the Senate filibuster's rule and would allow Democrats to pass the package, everybody, with, provided the entire caucus supports it. The legislation will face unified, unified GOP opposition. Senator Brassow said the package is not the solution that American people are looking for amid decades high inflation. Now, Mitch McConnell has also threatened to tank a Senate, a separate bipartisan competition bill that provide billions of dollars in benefits for U.S. Micro microchip manufacturing if Democrats follow through with the party line spending push. The legislation is still being ironed out by House and Senate negotiators, and Democrats so far have brushed off the criticism. In a separate interview on Fox News, Whip the Senate Majority Whip Dick Durbin of Illinois criticized McConnell's threat to tank key semiconductor subsidies over the prescription pricing push. Manchin and Schumer have worked out a proposal to impose a 3.8% tax on individuals earning more than 400 grand, but couples earning more than $500,000 from past through businesses. Then they will give the legislative language to the Senate parliamentarian to review. The $203 billion raised would extend the solvency of Medicare's hospital fund from 2028 to 2031. And multiple states have already approved new stimulus packages to ease residents and their economic concerns. And some states are planning to begin sending out more payments in the coming months. The new round of economic stimulus payments comes shortly after the U.S. experienced its largest 12-month increase in the inflation since 1981. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Um, what an array of extraordinary American leaders. I thank you all for being here and for the work you're doing every day. Um, and Secretary Walsh, I want to thank you for that introduction. I'm, but mostly, I want to thank you for the work that you have done your entire career. And as he said, he and I have been traveling the country together, and he is an extraordinary fighter for the working people of America. Um, it is also good to be here with Gene Sperling, and um, he has, as I mentioned to many of the leaders earlier, he has been working day and night to coordinate uh, with you to ensure that the American people benefit directly um, from the American Rescue Plan. So Gene, I want to thank you for your leadership, and I want to also recognize a long-standing public servant and leader, Governor Roy Cooper, along with Governor Tom Wolf, who has done an extraordinary job during difficult times. So thank you all and to all of the local and state elected leaders for being here today. Uh, before I begin, I will address this month's CPI report. There is no question that we still have work to do, but it is important to note that these numbers do not fully reflect the recent drop in gas prices. Average national gas prices have fallen every day for nearly 30 days. Since mid-June, prices are down 40 cents a gallon. Fighting inflation is one of our administration's top economic priorities, which is why we have taken action to lower the cost of living for Americans, millions of Americans. We are releasing 1 million ba barrels of oil a day from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to lower prices at the pump. We have reduced high-speed internet bills for millions of Americans, and we passed a tax cut to give working families up to $8,000 a year, which means giving folks more room in their budgets to buy food, medication, and school supplies for their children. 
President Joe Biden and I are always fighting to make sure that working families can get ahead and stay ahead. And that is why we continue to call on Congress to pass legislation to lower the price of prescription drugs, of health care, and the other everyday essentials that will meet the needs of American families. And so helping working families is why we are here today. When President Biden and I took office, our nation was facing its worst economic crisis in generations. We all remember, millions of jobs have been lost. Millions of small businesses closed. Millions of families pushed right to the edge. But we were not deterred. These leaders were not deterred. From day one, President Biden and I knew that to overcome these historic economic challenges, we needed to make an historic investment in our nation's working families. We needed to build an economy that works for working people. And that is why, with your help, we fought for and passed the American Rescue Plan, which included, among many things, a $40 billion investment in workforce development. Just think about that. When we talk about an investment in workforce development, that is about a direct investment in working people in America. It's a direct investment in human capacity. And for that reason, I know we're all excited about what it means and the potential for where this will go. For on the point rack with his unit for a year when he was attorney general. Came home with decorated soldier, bronze star, Legion of Merit, Dollars Conspicuous Service Cross. He didn't die in the line of duty. He came home from Iraq with cancer. It was horrific cancer that stole us from him. Stole him and him from us. But still, it always feels to me on Memorial Day. So as the cost of living continues to surge across the country for millions of people, top lawmakers in several states are now urging for President Biden to take executive action. Biden could pass a new executive order that would send out relief from gas prices to Americans. Up to $400 stimulus payments could be approved next week. And with a huge budget surplus, Governor, Governor Gavin Newsom announced an $18.1 billion inflation relief package meant to help Californians amid the skyrocketing inflation rates. Governor Newsom sent a statement we enacted the most comprehensive economic stimulus program in the nation last year, getting billions of dollars in immediate relief to millions of Californians. But many folks are still struggling, especially with high costs due to inflation. So we're leveraging this historic surplus to get money back into the pockets of Californians. The governor also noted that the relief package will help offset the higher costs that Californians are facing 